it's okay. Welcome. This important video training, which is being conducted by doctors and a school nurse, will help both schools and parents to assist students with epilepsy, and especially students with a prescription requiring emergency anti-seizure medication known as diastat. Participants should also refer to the training handout and other resources suggested in this video and in the handout. Thank you for participating in this training on how to administer diastat to students with epilepsy. Your role is very important for the continued well-being of our students. The learning objectives for this training are Know how to administer seizure first aid. Number two, be able to state clearly when and when not to use diastat for seizure control. Number three, Know how to recognize a prolonged seizure and or cluster seizures. Number four, be comfortable and familiar with the delivery system. Number five, know when to deliver diastat. Number six, know how to administer diastat safely. Number seven, know what to do after diastat has been administered. Number eight, know when to call for help. Number nine, understand how to time a seizure and count cluster seizures. Number 10, understand the difference between a seizure, a postictal phase, and behaviors. First, it is important that you have a basic understanding about epilepsy and how to recognize and respond to seizures. So we will now show you examples of different types of seizures. Take time to become familiar with each student's seizure types. The doctor's and parent's description of the student's seizures, as well as video examples provided by the parents and or school will be good resources to help you learn more about the student's seizures. Seizures can be of multiple different types. Some are more obvious as generalized tonic-clonic seizures. Others can be more subtle or begin more subtly with staring, a change in behavior, a turning of the head, and repetitive movements. The important thing to observe with these seizures is how different they can be, and certainly in the, your students who have epilepsy, it's important to know what types of seizures your student has so that you can recognize it when a seizure occurs. The first seizure that you're going to witness is what I call a complex partial seizure. Uh, this young boy uh, has tuberous sclerosis and has a tuber or abnormality in the brain that is highly epileptogenic. You can see that when the seizure starts, he was playing with the puzzle, and then suddenly he turned his head and eyes to the right, and his hands went up with his right arm flexed and his uh, or right arm extended and his left arm flexed. Subsequently, he's very agitated. His teachers mistakenly thought that this was a continuation of his complex partial seizures. But when we monitored him in the epilepsy monitoring unit, we found that this agitation was a post-ictal phenomenon. Again, it underscores the importance of knowing your student who has epilepsy and what his or her seizure type is like and what the onset and offset of the seizure is like. The second example is a young girl who arouses from sleep and then subsequently has a generalized tonic-clonic seizure. You can see her eyes open and there's a pause. At this point, electrographically, we can see that she's having a seizure, but the parent does not yet recognize that she's having a seizure. And then suddenly, her arms stiffen, the right arm is extended, the left arm is flexed, 
then both arms tonically extend and you can see generalized rhythmic fast activity that constitutes the clonic phase of a generalized tonic-clonic seizure. There is no strong head or eye deviation. Uh, the seizure continues for approximately a minute and as the seizure slowly subsides, the rhythmic clonic activity slows down and eventually stops. The last seizure I'm going to show you is a complex partial seizure that is much more subtle. As you can see, the young boy is sitting in bed uh, and then he, there's a change in his behavior. Initially, the father doesn't recognize it as the onset of the seizure, but his head slowly turns to the right and then his head goes down slightly and the father recognizes that this is probably the onset of the seizure. As the seizure progresses, please notice that there isn't rhythmic tonic stiffening or rhythmic clonic activity, but he remains confused. The father is asking him questions, but he is unable to respond. And ultimately, as the seizure progresses, he has repetitive swallowing and lip smacking. This is a complex partial seizure, and in this young boy's case, it emanates or comes from the left temporal lobe. Uh, some of his seizures would last for greater than five minutes and then would be followed by extreme fatigue and sleepiness. I've shown you a few samples of different types of seizures. I've certainly not shown you all the possible types of seizures, as depending on where the seizure focus is, the clinical manifestation of a seizure can be very different. Uh, and in fact, whatever the brain can do, a seizure can mimic that behavior. First aid for epilepsy is simple. The goal is to keep the student safe until the seizure stops naturally by itself. It's important to know how to respond to all seizures, including the most noticeable kind, generalized tonic-clonic seizures or convulsions. When providing seizure first aid for generalized tonic-clonic seizures, these are the key things to remember. Turn student gently onto one side. This will help keep the airway clear. Put something soft, like a folded sweatshirt, under the head. Keep calm and reassure other people who may be nearby. Time the seizure. Clear the area around the person of anything hard or sharp. Loosen anything around the neck that may make breathing difficult. Stay with the student until the seizure ends naturally. Be friendly and reassuring as consciousness returns. Don't hold the person down or try to stop his movements. Do not try to force the mouth open or put anything in the mouth. Always refer to the student's seizure action plan for specific instructions from the doctor regarding further emergency response that may be necessary if the seizure doesn't stop. Sometimes seizures are followed by what is called a post-ictal phase, and the student may become very tired or fall asleep. The post-ictal phase should not be included in the timing of the seizure. Always refer to the student's seizure action plan for specific instructions from the doctor, including whether student has a postictal phase and what it looks like. Some students are prescribed diastat to treat a cluster of seizures or to stop a prolonged seizure. Both cluster seizures and prolonged seizures are considered medical emergencies because they can lead to serious complications if left untreated. The seizure cluster is when seizures repeat over and over during a certain period of time. They may be brief and the child might be alert and oriented in between the seizures. 
A prolonged seizure is a continuous seizure lasting longer than three to five minutes without stopping. The doctor will specify how many minutes is considered a prolonged seizure for the student. Diastat is an anti-seizure medication approved by the Food and Drug Administration to be administered by family members and or caregivers in order to treat and stop cluster seizures or prolonged seizures. As part of this training, it is important for you to know the key terms in the Education Code. Please see your handout for more detailed definitions. For purposes of this training, emergency medical assistance means the administration of an emergency anti-seizure medication to a student suffering from an epileptic seizure. Non-medical school personnel refer to school employees who do not possess the licenses. Regular school day may include the instruction time in the classroom and other activities, such as field trips. Supervision means review, observation, and or instruction of a designated non-medical school employee's performance by a licensed person. Now, a credentialed school nurse will guide you through specific training on administration of diastat and the basic emergency follow-up procedures. The school nurse will also highlight the importance of the seizure action plan with emergency seizure care instructions to guide administration of emergency medication, the important role of the student's doctor, student's parents, school and school nurse. As a school nurse, I have had the opportunity to train many non-medical staff members to administer diastat without difficulty. Today, you will also learn how to administer diastat. As Dr. Partikian said, diastat is a drug approved by the FDA to be administered by non-medical personnel. The doctor's role is to provide detailed description of the student's seizures and detailed instructions about when to administer diastat and the appropriate follow-up. The doctor, parents, and school staff should work together to develop a seizure action plan for each student with epilepsy. If the student has a prescription for diastat, then their seizure action plan should also include emergency seizure care instructions. The law requires, at a minimum, the parent or guardian provide the school with a written statement from the student's health care provider containing the following 10 items. Student's name, name and purpose of the prescribed emergency anti-seizure medication, prescribed dosage, detailed seizure symptoms, including frequency, type, and length of seizures that identify when the administration of an emergency anti-seizure medication becomes necessary, the method of administration, the frequency with which the medication may be administered, the circumstances under which the medication may be administered, any potential adverse responses by the student, and recommended actions and when to call 911, a protocol for observing the student after a seizure, and a statement as to who should be contacted to continue observation plan. Please review your training handout for more details. When a student has epilepsy and comes to the school with a seizure action plan, I sit down with the parent to review the key features of the plan for their child. Among other things, the plan should include description of the seizures and instructions for appropriate seizure first aid and when to call 911, signed by the doctor for that specific student. When a parent contacts the school stating that their child is required to have diastat, you should meet with the parent to make sure that all of the paperwork is in place. The parent or guardian is responsible for working with the doctor to provide the school with the following. One, the seizure action plan. Two, diastat with the correct dose dialed in by the pharmacist. Three, written authorization from the parent allowing a school employee to administer diastat. 
It is also helpful if the parent can provide the school with detailed description and or video examples of the student's seizures. Parents will need to let school personnel know when diastat has been administered outside of the school. It is the responsibility of the school nurse or the school staff to check diastat for the correct dose against the doctor's orders, check the expiration date, determine where diastat will be stored, make sure you'll be able to access it quickly and that it is kept at room temperature. Do not expose to extreme heat or cold temperature. Before going over how to administer diastat, let us first familiarize ourselves with the other items that you should keep handy in the event that you'll need to administer diastat. I call this the student's diastat kit, which should include the following. The diastat syringe, a pair of gloves, packet of lubricating jelly, emergency seizure care instructions. It's good to also keep an opaque cloth with the diastat kit, something large enough to ensure privacy for your student while you're administering diastat. Now that you're familiar with the diastat kit, let's take a closer look at the parts of the diastat syringe. Once you have the diastat in your possession from the student's parents, you will need to, number one, check the diastat for correct dose against doctor's orders. If it is not the correct dose, return the diastat to the parent to be corrected by the pharmacist. Number two, check the expiration date of the diastat. Number three, determine where diastat will be stored. Make sure you'll be able to access it quickly and that it is kept at room temperature. If a student has a prolonged or cluster seizure that requires diastat according to the doctor's orders, provide seizure first aid, time the seizure, and prepare to give diastat by the following protocol. Turn the student on side facing you. Make sure you can see their face to check for breathing and skin color and vomiting. Do not leave the student alone while they are having a seizure. Send someone to get the medication or grab it yourself if you can continue to observe the student. Use standard precautions. Put on gloves. Take out one packet of lubricating jelly and one diastat syringe. Ensure privacy by using a sheet, blanket, or jacket. Bend upper leg forward to expose rectum. Pull down pants and underwear. Separate buttocks to expose rectum. If you see stool, wipe away before giving diastat. Remove the cap from the diastat syringe. Make sure that the seal pin is in the cap. If it is in the tip of the syringe, take it out. Open the lubricating jelly and stick the tip of the syringe in the packet. Gently insert syringe tip into the rectum with the rim snug against the buttocks. Slowly count to three while gently pushing the plunger in until it stops. Remove syringe from rectum. Hold buttocks together to prevent leakage and slowly count to three. When to call for help. Know and follow instructions regarding follow-up care on the student seizure action plan because each plan should be customized to the student and school protocol. When to call for help. One, if the seizure or seizure cluster continues for 10 to 15 minutes after giving diastat. Two, if the seizure behavior is different from the other episodes. Three, if you are alarmed by the frequency or severity of the seizures. Four, if you are alarmed by the color or breathing of the person. Five, if the person has an injury requiring medical attention. Make sure to give diastat to the paramedics, parents, or guardians, noting the time it was administered. There may be other locations where you need to administer diastat, such as the bus, playground, or community. On a bus, you can lay the student across the seat facing you and proceed to administer diastat. In the community or playground, 
you will need to ensure privacy by using a sheet or a jacket. By now, you should number one, know how to administer seizure first aid. Number two, be able to state clearly when and when not to use diastat for seizure control. Number three, know how to recognize a prolonged seizure and or cluster seizures. Number four, be comfortable and familiar with the delivery system. Number five, know when to deliver diastat. Number six, know how to administer diastat safely. Number seven, know what to do after diastat has been administered. Number eight, know when to call for help. Number nine, understand how to time a seizure and count cluster seizures. Number 10, understand the difference between a seizure, a postictal phase, and behaviors. Please ask the school nurse and parents or guardians if you have remaining questions and they will consult with the doctor as needed. Other handouts and videos may be available online or from the Epilepsy Foundation.